Hello and welcome to a virtual talks at Google. Today we'll be welcoming and uh, Roz Mays, also known as Roz the Diva. She's a personal trainer and a self-proclaimed Paul Diva. She's going to talk to us about how to get rid of gym intimidation and how to work out both in the gym and now at home. Welcome, Roz. Juna, thank you everybody for having me. Uh, this is so exciting and it gives me a reason to put on actual clothes. So that's pretty awesome. <laughs> Awesome sauce. So, oh yeah. So, in general, should I, um, shall I just jump into my little spiel right now, or is there anything? No. Else? Ah, to us, and then I'll come back in for questions. Um, if anyone has a question, please pop it into the live chat, and then we will bring them in at the question and answer portion. Uh, about twenty minutes, thirty minutes in. Cool. Sounds you, awesome. Yeah. So uh, once again, hello everybody. My name is Roz the Diva, uh, Roz Mays, whatever you wanna find me and Google me as, I'm here for it. I'm coming at you from Brooklyn, New York right now. Um, shout out to any other New Yorkers who are being quarantined with themselves in their apartment, in a New York size apartment. <laughs> Somehow, you know, we're absolutely getting through this, but oh goodness gracious. Um, so as Ajuna just mentioned, um, I'm a personal trainer and my sport of choice is pole dancing. And I've been a pole dancer since October 2007. So my goodness, 12 and a half years, that's pretty insane. And um, besides pole dancing, I also do uh, regular fitness. I guess not regular, but like I, call, I love to call it civilian fitness, uh, meaning anything that's on the ground that normal people do. So I do those two things. And I've been working full time in fitness uh, for six years now. Wow. Yeah. For six years. And um, I do a combination of group fitness classes. I do small group training. I do big group group trainings. And I also work with clients on a one on one basis. And more specifically, my client base, uh, we are all non traditional athletes. So we're talking about people who have traditionally been pushed aside or ignored in fitness marketing and fitness culture. So um, I myself I'm black. Well, I'm actually young, black and cute. Hey, <laughs> so I'm young, black and cute, but I'm also plus size. Um, and I am terribly extroverted, uh, which is pretty awesome. Um, but my clients that many of them identify as queer or they're a part of the LGBTQ plus community. There's also uh, disabled clients that I work with. There are many clients that are working through some mental health issues and they're working through trauma. There's other clients that are in recovery and, you know, there's basically a little bit of Ura body. Um, and many of my clients are uh, female presenting, but we do cover the entire gender spectrum. And that's something that I'm really proud of. So basically for everybody out there who was the last kid picked, if you were ever picked on soccer teams for dodgeball, for anything, you are specifically who I love to rock with. So this has been who I've been working with. And what I found in working with this particular client base is um, I want to talk about why they have felt to the push to the side in the fitness industry and how I've been able to pull them back in. Through that, I want to be able to teach all of you and inspire all of you if you felt that you got pushed aside in the fitness industry or you didn't belong. I want to assure you, oh, you belong, boo boo. I got you. So first, um, I want to to talk about what is what is fitness seems like an obvious thing but you would be surprised i think people have a notion that fitness whether it's at home or at the gym has to be hardcore balls to the wall i gotta train like a marine i varsity football tryouts tomorrow Whoa. chill boo boo uh-uh it's not that serious. I mean, yes, there certainly are really intense athletes and intense sports, and those are fantastic, and there's nothing wrong with that. But people think if they don't fit in, 
And if they can't perform at the same level as those Olympic athletes, that they don't count. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Somebody lied to you, boo-boo. You are an athlete as you are right this minute. No exceptions, no caveats. You right now are an athlete. You have so much to contribute to the athletic community. Your contributions are not going to look like my contributions. They're not going to look like the Olympian contributions. It doesn't make them any less valuable. That is so, so important. I don't want you to ever forget that. And now, all right, if you're not doing these wild Olympic sports, well, what do you do? Guess what? If you move any part of your body, that's exercise. <laughs> Stop. No, nope. I don't want you out here giving me qualifiers. I don't want you to try to tell me how much you don't care. Well, I only garden. I only chase my kids around the house. I'm <laughs> Anytime you are moving your body, even one part of your body, you absolutely are an athlete and you are exercising. So go ahead and throw these, throw in the comments what kind of sports that you like to do, uh, how you like to move your body. Uh, my mom, for example, hi mom, and dad and Grammy and Lindsay, sorry, I always have to give the family a first shout out. So my mom has transformed our backyard into a floral landscape and gardening, taking out those weeds, cutting off dead tree limbs, all of that, that absolutely counts as a workout, that counts as exercise and fitness. I know since we're quarantined, all of you superhero parents and caregivers have probably been chasing kids around the whole everywhere. Chase them in the living room, chase them in the backyards. If you have a backyard, I don't know what that is because I'm in New York City. You're chasing them down the street, in the parks, everywhere. You 100,000% get credit for that being exercise as well. And even if it's even farther from the traditional model of exercise, let's say you're in a chair and you're in a seating position, you're in a seated position. Are you lifting your fist up to punch the patriarchy in the face? Oh, that's the best kind of exercise right there. So listen to me, I'm dead serious when I tell you that you, just as you are right now, you are an athlete. You are a valuable, valid athlete. And I would love, love to celebrate what you're doing right now. So we talked about what is athletics. And I understand now, of course, there's the traditional, you know, view of athletics where there's sports and, you know, my sport of choice being pole dancing. And so often people tell me that they're afraid to try pole dancing, no matter how cool it looks or how cute my outfits are. They're afraid to try pole dancing because they're afraid of failure and they're afraid of how they're going to look. Spoiler alert and I think I speak for most trainers out here, we already know you're gonna be a hot mess. One more again, your trainer, your teachers, your coaches, everyone already knows, yes, you are gonna look a hot mess when you're starting to learn a new type of movement. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't start. And it doesn't mean that we're looking down on you. If everybody was perfect at pole dance and they came in, they were just, they just knocked it out. They're lifting up their bodies. They're doing all of this perfectly. I'd be unemployed. I don't want to be unemployed again. That wasn't cute before. It's not cute now. So we coaches, like this is our job is to take you and to mold you into these fantastic, fabulous, athletic divas that you are out there. So once again, we know, we know how scared you are because that's where we started. We know you're going to look crazy with a capital K and we know that you're not going to understand what's going on. That's our job 
is to help you get through that. And if you're working with a coach or a teacher who doesn't feel that way or doesn't take the time to work this out through you so you get it, bye, Felicia. So now I want to talk about why this is important. It's important that you recognize the movements that you're doing as an athlete and as exercise because that feeling of exclusion is just the worst, especially when you're trying so hard not to. So that's also so incredibly important to me that anybody who works with me, they know they are never excluded for what they can or cannot do. That's not how this works. Now, I want to talk about the purpose of working out and the purpose of fitness, because once again, the fitness media has us all the way twisted. The purpose of exercise isn't only to lose weight. The purpose of exercise isn't only about losing weight. I know that is a revolutionary thing and people are like, but why would you work out if you don't need to lose weight? What had happened? What had happened? Mm. That is what the patriarchy <laughs> wants you to think and wants you to believe that you have to lose weight. You have to get smaller. You have to make your muscles bigger. And those are the only things that matter when you work out. Nah, son. Not even a little bit. Now, I absolutely support weight loss. I support, in fact, weight gain. I support you wanting to change your body for any reason, as long as you're doing it in a healthy way. But what's so important is that you recognize there are so many more benefits for you. It's about you just being the most awesome version of you out there. And one another, this is a big thing because in terms of gym intimidation, people think they, they set these goals for themselves of I have to drop 20 pounds in three months, for example, or I have to be able to lift this much, this much weight in this much time. And when they don't reach those goals, you automatically assume that you failed. And for people who have tried and failed in the past, this just adds to a list of disappointment and heartache and embarrassment and shame. Embarrassment and shame. Mm, mm. You know, some people may disagree with me, but I personally believe that the most difficult type of embarrassment and shame to work through and to overcome is the ones that come from inside. So the things that I tell myself and the beliefs that I've set for myself, those, whew, it's, I'm a far worse critic on myself than any internet troll, any crazy people anywhere. And so I understand what it's like when you're trying to do something and you set a goal because you're like, this time I'm going to do it. And it's like, this time now I failed. You are not alone and you are not a failure. What I would like you to do is to refine your goals towards fitness. I think one th for home workouts, for example, now this is a very relevant thing right now is gym rats like me that are used to going to the gym, living our best life, getting sweaty, try not to creep on people that look good, but figure out how to approach them like mature individuals. Okay. Anyway, so we're used to going to the gym, having stuff to do. We're like, yeah, we're rocking this. And then quarantine, quarantine, quarantine snatched every weight every gym, every funky gym towel, all my potential gym husbands just gone overnight, literally in New York City on March 17th. All four gyms that I used to work at. And now I got to work out at home. And for me, this is so difficult because I love the camaraderie that comes with a gym. I love 
people. I love being social. I love being loud and sweaty and not wearing a shirt in public. And so now I've got to do that from the comforts of my couch. And uh, this is, I had to realize, and I had to realize this early on, I'm not going to accomplish the same things at home than I do when I'm at my regular gym. And one, it's because I don't have the equipment, but two, really, it's because we're in a pandemic. There is not a single human on the planet at this point that is not affected emotionally or physiologically with what's going on around them. Even if you yourself are straight chilling, you're okay, you know, you don't have, your anxiety is manageable and, you know, you're like, but I'm, I'm fine if this isn't affecting me. No, we have had a major disruption in the routine of everything. So even if you yourself are okay, there's still everybody around you who has just gone through something extraordinary, good or bad or otherwise. So I truly believe that everybody out there, and especially people who've been going to the gym, we're coming out of this with different bodies, period. It does not mean these different and new bodies are wrong. It just means that they're different. With your home workout goals, it doesn't mean that if you're not going hard all the time, like CrossFit style, just because you're not doing that at home does not invalidate the work that you are doing. Personally, I go for walks around my neighborhood trying to avoid people, which is a nightmare in New York City. <laughs> Even though everybody is pretty well behaved around my area, it's still really difficult, but I digress. So I've got, so I'm, I go for walks. Um, I need sunlight. I need to see people, even if they are covered completely head to toe. I just need another human body in the vicinity of me within like 30 feet. And uh, that has worked wonders for my mental health and why I've been able to, for the most part, like be all right. Like I, I got some ugly moments here or there, but for the most part, like I'm okay. And I feel pretty steady. And um, also I realized one of the goals of working out at home, I'm not going to make gains. So I'm not necessarily going to be a, a better pole dancer. I'm not going to learn new tricks. I'm not going to be able to lift more weights, but I'm able to hold my sanity and to keep my body in some sort of movement period. So that way, when I do get back to my gyms, which cannot come soon enough, when I do get back there, I'll have at least a piece of the mental part already down and good to go. So then I can see how much weight I shouldn't be lifting at this moment. And it's really, really important to understand once again, I know I've said this, but I can't say it enough. You're going to have different goals in different settings. And those goals do not need to be about overachieving all the time, especially if you've been one of those marginalized athletes in the past. You do not need to prove yourself to anybody. This is not about showing them how awesome you are. This is about adding fun and enjoyment to your own life. We're adults out there. We don't have time for another thing to do. All right, so now I'd like to talk about what you actually can do and how to choose some movements. So I love pole dancing. I started it, as I said, about almost 13 years ago at this point. And pole was my gateway drug to learning how to be a professional gym rat and to be a group fitness teacher and now a personal trainer. And one of the reasons why pole was so influential to me is because it was fun, fun. It, it is hard as hell, but I found an, an activity that I enjoyed. So, and I did that from 
day one, even before, even when I was taking other gym classes, when I began my adult gym rat hood, I focused on things and activities that I enjoyed. So that way, when I was working my way into making exercise a habit, it wasn't another obligation. It was how can I lie to my boss to get out of work early to go to this class? Because the class is bomb. Now, I am not suggesting that you lie to your bosses at Google. In fact, please stay employed because that's real cute, especially during this pandemic. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> is that when you have something that you look forward to, it's not an obligation. It's not about dragging yourself someplace, but it's something you look forward to. A comp probably the biggest, biggest barrier to people working out, whether it's at home or at a gym, is people tell me, Roz, I just need some motivation. I just, I don't want to do it. I, don't, I can't get started. You need motivation to go have a colonoscopy. No one really enjoys that. I mean, I guess you could because live your best life, but like you don't need, <laughs> that's what you need the motivation for is to do things that kind of suck. Do you need motivation to eat cake? I mean, some of you might. I don't because cake is delicious. So the difference between a colonoscopy and cake is that cake is something that I enjoy. It adds joy and happiness to me. So I don't need motivation to go out and participate in something that's exciting and that's fun. Save the motivation for some from the colonoscopy and other things that are probably going to have to happen. So, and what this does is now this this presents fitness and exercise in a completely different light. And that's what I want. That's the missing piece for everybody who has been pushed to the side for one reason or another. It's because they've started to develop a relationship or the relationship has already been developed. That fitness is a punishment. That it is, it's what you have to do to write, to correct the sins of all that cake that you've been eating. It's an obligation. It's something that you must do and you're not supposed to like it. It's just, it's work, it's another thing. Nah, that sucks. Like that really sucks when you think about that. Mm -mm. So I wanna help you heal the relationship that you have with fitness and with working out. All right, looking at this list. Ha, 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 Let's now talk about, all right, you found an activity that you like, which, by the way, is going to take time and effort. I tried pole, loved it from the first class. It was just it was a wrap. It's done. I was in love. I started lifting weights, loved it from the first time I picked something rusty off of the floor. Love it. Awesome. I would not have found either of those two activities if I didn't try them. You've got to try them. And more than likely, you have to try multiple activities with multiple instructors to figure out what works best for you. And again, to figure out what you like doing. I can tell you what I don't like doing Cardio. Listen, unless it's walking or twerking, don't talk to me. Get out my whole face. Shout out to all of the runners out there, people who like to sprint and do all those things that I can't even spell at this point. So no hate. I'm just saying I'm not one of them. I will watch you do a marathon. I'll get winded running across the street. I can bench press a bus, but I mean, it's going. I'm going to be chugging. Ooh, ooh, chugging to make the bus. And you know what? That's fine at this point because I know my role when the zombie apocalypse happens, my role isn't to outrun the zombies. It's my role to throw them over the bridge. I can do that. That's fine. Please. I digress. 
So you found an activity that you like, you found an instructor that you like, and you've been doing it for a while. You're like, man, this is a habit. This is awesome. And then enter other people. Because it would be wonderful if we can go about doing the things that we enjoyed without external factors screwing up our game. But it happens. So whether those factors are family members, and particularly if they're young children that require a lot of your time and attention and care, as they absolutely deserve to, perhaps you are caring for other family members or other friends or acquaintances and that that takes up a lot of time or maybe you just you have a job that you like or maybe don't like and that sucks up all your time so right after motivation people tell me I don't have time to work out and I don't have time to to do this and make this a habit because I've got all these other obligations that I have to I have to do and like ah uh, so this is where I want to encourage you all to set a boundary. And I know this is much, much, much easier said than done. Because you can tell people how important it is for you to work out, but they're like, that's cool, mom, but I still want some waffles. <laughs> I still need some waffles for breakfast and I need other things. So I understand that good or bad, there's still these external factors out there. So one tip that I encourage you to do is to make, again, rewrite the rules. If you think you have to work out for an hour, maybe you work out for eight minutes. Eight minutes. While the kids are having their waffles, if they're Eggo waffles, those are delicious. Or homemade, other things are all right too, but I like Eggos. So the kids are having their waffles, guess what you're going to do? Bust out a couple of squats. When somebody, if it's bath time, great, you're going to give me a couple of bicep curls. You don't have to do everything all at once because that all or nothing mentality, again, is where we seem to run into the same patterns of starting and failing and starting and failing. So let's break up those patterns. If you've tried something in the past and it has not worked, you've got to change something fundamentally about how you're gonna attempt this time. Or else you're setting yourself up for the same type of failure again and again and again. And that's awful. That's awful. I don't want that for you. I want you to be excited about fitness and exercise as part of your life. I want the people around you to be excited for you and to be excited with you. I know you can control others. And, you know, I know I've talked about being in the caregiving role, but there's also the roles of if you're not caring for people, but if you have less than ideal relationships with your family or those close by and everybody's cooped up together and you're trying to work out and you hear people talking about, oh, why are you doing that? That doesn't make sense. Here, you should do it this way or mocking you or um, they're, they're, tell they're basically trying to tell you that they don't approve. Why are you doing this? It doesn't make sense. And this is where it is not your fault. It is not your fault for what other people say to you. We can't necessarily control that. But although it's not your fault and it's not fair that you have to heal from stuff that you didn't cause, I would like to encourage everyone to please ignore them and continue doing what's right for you. And that is a much easier said than done thing. Good gracious is it's much easier said than done. But I don't, I would hate for you to miss out on the benefits, the awesomeness and the fun that the, the fun that can come with exercise because somebody else doesn't recognize those benefits and that fun. Now, how exactly you go about healing those relationships, 
I don't know. And that's not my place to say that. That's that's what we're going to call Oprah. Oprah's going to let us know one good time. Maybe Ayala, depending on the season. <laughs> they can help you work through that. But what I want you to know is that you are worth doing the hard work to heal those relationships. Um, and I, I really can't say that enough. So I'm going to say it one more time. You are worth working through those difficult emotions and the difficult external pressures. The benefit's worth it because you're worth it and you deserve to enjoy what you're doing and you deserve the benefits that come with an active lifestyle. However, you choose to define active lifestyle. So I actually think I would like to pause there for um, a few moments uh, as I've been going now for 30 minutes and I've seen some comments that are coming up and I love this and I want to open this up for questions. Um, Ajuna, maybe, maybe she's got one or two questions out there, but also for anybody who's watching this along on YouTube, throw out any and everything. I, I the, the difficult questions that how does race, how does weight, how does gender, how does size, all of that ugliness, yeah, bring it on. I'm not afraid of it and I'm excited about this mm -hmm. um, because I know that those are really the things, those are the topics that people really like. Okay. Okay. <laughs> hey, Juna. Hey. So I wanted to talk to you about these diverse athletes. I am myself one of them and had the pleasure of taking one of your group classes and mm -hmm. you tried to get me to try pole. And I was just like, I have no upper body strength. How dare you? How do you convince all of these different athletes to try new sports or if you're differently able to how to get up and use a pole or other um, gym equipment? That is such a great question. I'm so glad, glad that you brought it up. So that intimidation factor of seeing like, oh gosh, nobody looks like me. And now I want to go into this class or go into this environment, which is already difficult difficult enough and try some crazy things, one of the best things that you can do is to, to surround yourself physically or digitally with other people who look like you. I cannot tell you how many hundreds of thousands of diverse athletes are out there waiting for you to come and join us. And this is where, again, you'll have to put in a smidge of effort going out of your way to find plus size pole dancers, plus size surfers, plus size marathon runners. I can name people in each of those categories. And I'm using plus size simply as an example because that's, uh, that's what I identify as, plus size, overweight, larger than average. And... If you can't see it, you don't know that you can be it. Representation matters so much. And in fact, you may not realize how much representation actually matters until you see yourself reflected in some way, whether it's on someone's Instagram account or it's a YouTube video or anything else out there in the interwebs. When you see that person that you can connect with on some level and they are living out your greatest fears, that says more than any words possible. So it is so important that you make an effort to surround yourself physically and digitally with other people that you connect with. Thank you. So what have you been doing now that you're at home? How have you been working out and getting active other than your walks? So other than my walks, um, I've also been leading a lot a lot of online training. I've been doing some work with small groups, uh, which I have every Friday. I have a core and stretch class. And I also have been working with clients on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And uh, so far, it's been a trip 
for me because I'm used to in person, that energy. I love that. And so now me coaching into a camera, at first it was really awkward, but my clients are rock stars. So if they are doing a movement, Half the time, I'm going to do it with them. <laughs> so that way, and me doing the movement with them, one, it helps my clients remember that they're not alone. They are not alone ever doing these exercises. And then number two, it motivates me to get working. And because the community and that social aspect is so important, I've gone out of my way and I've found ways to have that social workout feeling. So if I'm not outside dodging cars and people and Corona, <laughs> then I'm usually here in the apartment doing some core work or extra or showing some demos for my clients or preparing for a live class. Thank you. So another, as a, I'm also plus size and I've also been trying different things. Something that also alienates me when I try to work out is I wonder if some of the moves are a little too difficult for me and how to adjust to them. Or if some difficulty that I'm having, I'm not quite sure if it's because I um, look different than other people in the class or if it's an active thing that I should bring up to the trainer or the teacher. Um, how do you advise someone in that position to make an adjustment or talk to someone to figure out what to do. Ajuna, you are just singing, just let me drop knowledge bombs today. So this is yet again, another huge, huge intimidation factor is that if you, let's say you wanna try a sport and you're game for it, but you know, if everybody is literally a hundred pounds lighter than you, or they are, they have different abilities, than what you have, you know your body's gonna move differently. And it takes a lot of courage, first and foremost, to put yourself in a position where you know you're gonna be the only one who looks like you. That's exhausting. It's worth it, but that's exhausting. What I would suggest is that you research the instructor before you start working with them. I suggest you do that good old Instagram stalk. You do a Google stalk, you Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. Use all of the platforms because if they're on there as a professional, which almost all of us are, we want to show you how we work. We want to show you the values that we have about working out and about fitness. And we're going to show you that through a feed, through videos, through pictures. So when you when you look at who an instructor is, who they're working with, the kinds of movements that they're doing, um, one that can help put your mind at ease because one of the greatest pieces of intimidation is that the unknown. You we fear the unknown. We don't know what they're doing. We don't know how they are. So let's see if we can get an example or a preview before you put yourself in a scary position. And even after that, so you have found an instructor, you've been stalking them for a minute, you're like, oh my gosh, Roz looks so cute, but I'm still scared. Oh, should I sign up? One, yes. Number two, if you either message the instructor beforehand or sign up for class, come 15, 20 minutes early. I have clients do this all the time in my group classes. They'll come and say, this is my first time. I've, I've got the courage to do this. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm terrified, but I'm here. I don't know what's going on, but I'm here. When people tell me that, I get so excited. Like, so excited because I'm like, ooh, 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 fresh meat. And I'm so excited about molding people from day one and making them just a whole army of mini divas running after me, also twerking on these streets. So I think when you establish that with an instructor, also I'm thinking during the class, let me keep an eye on my brand new soldier over here and make sure that they look like they're keeping up. Now, if I see someone, whether they're new or not, and they seem like they're struggling with a position in class, rather than put that one person on blast, I tell the entire room, here is 
an alternative movement that is just as awesome, but it might be more comfortable for you. And when people bring, or if they tell me like, you know, I've got knee issues in the beginning of class, which spoiler alert, like 80% of the population has bad knees. So when people tell me that ahead of time, in my mind, I can think, okay, if we're going to do something that is very knee heavy, let me go out of my way to woosa and think about what's an alternative that I can do. So this person can still participate, but not feel pressured to destroy their knees again. Now, if you do go to the instructor ahead of time and they don't change anything, or you don't feel like they really kind of care about what you're doing, bye Felicia. Because once again, there are 900,000 of us out here and it's going to take time and it's going to take effort to figure out who you want to vibe and rock with. Great. I see we have some questions coming in. Um, if anyone has more questions, please pop them into the chat. Ah, oh, Farrah, it's a great question. How would you measure success if the goal is not weight loss? Love you for this one. I measure success. How many, squ how many squats can we do correctly? This isn't simply about volume, but it's, do you know what a squat is? Do you know how to perform a squat correctly? And do you know how this is going to enhance and help you out in the real world? And when you have that goal, like, so I'm using squats because I love it. I do squats every single session with every single client. And in, rather than focus on how much weight I'm losing during these squats, I can focus on, you know, when I did 10 squats last year, everything was crying. I had to sit down and think about my life for the next three days. But now today, since I've been practicing, I can do those 10 squats and not think twice. You can feel your body becoming stronger and you can feel your, your muscles. They're going to react smarter than if you hadn't educated them and made them practice doing movements. And then in the real world, maybe if something you like to do is going hiking or even going for a walk, if there's any sort of elevation, that can kill your knees right there. But maybe a point of success for you is that you are working towards fitness goals that help you in that future hike. So, so you can can hike pain free or at least in less pain than what you were doing before. So this is a quality of life improvement. And that is so important. Weight loss will probably get you started in the gym, but that's typically is not what keeps people working out. It's because they're getting benefits somewhere in their life. They have more energy. They're excited. They're more outgoing. They are, I'm sorry. They're excited about what they're able to do. And I think when you frame fitness goals in a class around what you would like to do, rather than straight numbers and pounds and inches, you've got something bigger to aspire towards. Awesome. Um, we have another one here. Sharon says, how do I remember and prioritize these healthy messages after a setback? If I stumble or skip a workout, it's easy to get down and go back to thinking that fitness is just too hard. Mm, mm. Boo boo, Sharon, I feel you. One thing that I didn't know and I would not have known is that your fitness goes in waves and patterns, waves and patterns. I didn't know that and I wouldn't have known that if I hadn't had 13 years experience at this point of being an athlete and understanding that I'll have a few months where me and Serena Williams, we're going toe to toe. And then a few months where I'm like, Ooh, can I spell treadmill? Probably not. And I think people have to understand that being an athlete and working out, it doesn't mean every single day 
for 90 minutes, you're going hard in the paint. Rest is important. Sometimes that rest is for 10 seconds between an exercise. Sometimes that rest is for a month between gym periods because your body has got to heal and got to catch up with itself. So what I would encourage anybody out there, if you have a bad workout or you stop for a while and you think, well, it's over. No, it's not. That's just part of a cycle. And you now you can have that up cycle. And it doesn't mean that you failed. You just took a pause. And whether I just mentioned, if that pause is a month, maybe that pause is 25 years. That doesn't mean that you failed. It is simply a pause. Now, also the other part of this is feeling like, you know, you failed yet again, or fitness is too hard. This is where it is incredibly important. You've got to look at the goals that you set for yourself. Because if your goal, my goal is only about like losing 50 pounds in three months, which is not healthy or possible for me personally. If I don't make that, then I'm always going to think of myself as a failure where that goal was a hot mess to begin with. So look at what is, what is your desired outcome and what is the timeline for this desired outcome and really think, is this realistic? Because if it's not, if it's something that you tried before and tried and tried and kept failing, then again, we got to change. It's not you that has to change. We got to change those goals. We got to change your desired out, maybe even your desired outcomes. Um, but it's not about you failing. It's not, not, not about you failing. Awesome. Uh, Yolanda says, how do you make peace with this? No matter how committed you are to your wellness, there are forces outside your control that could take your life. I'm referring to the lynching of Ahmoud Arbery. So this is where I've said that I'm young, black, and cute, and I need to talk about the black piece of this because fitness and race and in my case, size, those three things will never not go together. And particularly, no matter what sort of, um, uh, no matter what minority group that you may or may not identify with, we're all going through some things. And it is absolutely jarring. It is depressing. It is exhausting. And it feels completely overwhelming to want to care for yourself when there's so many others that have also been trying to care for themselves, but then the world just shuts them down. And I think one of the most important things is to listen to yourself. What do you need? Some people to work through this rage and this depression and this anxiety, movement and exercise can help with that. For some people, it might be sitting down, trying to learn or recognize how can you work through difficult emotions? And that might have nothing to do with fitness. Maybe your way of working through these difficult emotions is actually slowing down, putting a pause on a rigid schedule or reevaluating why are you doing the things that you're doing? Do they matter? Do they add value to your life, whether it's fitness related or not? And I want you to think about prioritizing the activities and the thoughts that add value. With, same thing as Marie Kondo was doing a few months ago and everybody's freaking out over here. You look at this bag of chips. Does this spark joy? The answer is yes, because they're delicious and crispy. So guess what? They are worth working in and holding on. Now, maybe I can't work them in every day to what I'm doing, but I know this is a tool that's on deck if I ever need to try it. And you're probably going to have to have multiple tools and ways of working through um, third-hand trauma and grief and stress. And exercise can be just one tool out of many. Rest is a huge tool. Rest, rest, rest. Awesome. So
So Shami says, do you have any advice for someone like me who dresses in longer and more covered workout clothing? So often I feel I'm not fitting in. So my first reaction is if you like your outfit, it almost doesn't matter what you're wearing because other people are also going to be hyped about your outfit. Now, if for whatever reason, if you're more comfortable or um, you just want to wear clothes that don't look like others, I think this is where you've got to, this is where doing a fun activity and something that you enjoy and that adds value to your life. This is where it's again, really important because you'll be far less distracted about your outfit if you're having a good time. And if you don't have time to look around and notice all of the differences and to get caught up in that, um, if you don't have time because you're having, you're laughing, you're, you've got your peeps cheering you on, you're cheering other people on, then I think it becomes less of an issue. But certainly if you, and I, I know, now I know this being said too, depending on the type of movement that you're doing, sometimes, you know, the clothes can be, can impede that. So for, for pole dancing is like the perfect example. So when I started pole dancing, I was not comfortable taking my top off and just being in a sports bra and shorts because um, I carry a lot of my excess body weight in my stomach and I am deeply ashamed about that. And even, but the thing with pole is you need dry skin to stick to the pole. That's spoiler alert. That's why strippers run around naked and pole dancers, we don't wear much more than they do is because it's literal physics. Cotton does not stick to metal, but your skin can and does. And, and I found myself, um, I wasn't able to do certain moves after a while. I stunted my own growth or so I thought because I didn't want to take off my shirt and but I still want to do these cool pole things. So I think this is again, where we can adjust the goals. If the goals that you have are dependent on what you're wearing, then maybe let's adjust your goals or your happiness. So it reflect, it works within your values and it works with what matters to you. And so I think, you know, I, I can't speak that that's definitely going to fix it, but I certainly hope that that opens up a new way of thinking about that. That is adjust your goals of happiness and what you want to do with the sport to reflect your personal values. Awesome. Let's take one last one. Um, sure. Antoinette says, how do you view the importance of food and nutrition when it comes to fitness? Mm, Antoinette Bobo. So I see exercise and fitness. They are siblings. They're really close siblings, but they are two completely separate beings. Now, one highly influences the other. There is no question about that. But fitness and exercise, those are two different things. I suggest if you're just getting started in trying to incorporate movement or being healthy, you pick one of those things to get comfortable with first. If you try to change everything overnight, that's not going to happen. We know that, but for real, for real, you cannot suddenly eat nothing but carrots and go for five, five mile walks every day. That's not going to happen. So I think one um, and how they influence each other um, also matters. So fitness, I know if my goal is to dance back up to Beyonce whenever we go back to the world, which, hey, boo, hey, um, if I'm on the pole with B, then it doesn't serve me if my nutrition does doesn't support my fitness goals. And for me personally, that means that I've got to have a ton of protein and a ton of water and also vegetables and plants as well. Um, so having that, so I think about, okay, what kind of workout am I going to do and how, 
how can I eat something and drink things that support my workout goals? But I also, though, I want to make this point really clear that it is different, that those are two separate schools of thought, because people assume, especially when it comes to weight loss, they think that exercise is going to make you drop pounds. And that's super important. And food might be like secondary, but not even the case. It's a different field of study. It's a whole different discipline. And actually, in terms of weight loss, for example, what you eat is probably about 75 80% a greater influence on the composition of your body than the kind of movements and exercises that you do. So I think those two work together, but recognize that they're two separate entities. I am awesome at the fitness part and I love it. I am crap at nutrition sometimes. So that's something that I'm always working through. And there's, there's a lot of demons I got to work out between my relationship with me and food. So recognize they're separate, they're separate people, but they're siblings. Awesome. How should people keep in touch with you if they have more questions or if you want to take some of your classes? Yes. So uh, people can hit me up at rozthediva.com. I believe it's on the bottom of your screens. Rozthediva, R-O-Z, the diva.com. Um, this is where you can find me everywhere. Really, if you just Google Roz the Diva, then I should hopefully pop up every which way on the internet. Um, Instagram, if you want some if you want to hear me dropping sweaty F-bombs in a park somewhere, go ahead and check me out there. Um, as I mentioned, I'm doing a core and stretch class every Friday. This class, it's uh, it's chill. It's about 45 minutes. And it's pay what you're able to afford. Whatever that is is cool. Um, I also have a Patreon account, which I'm super excited about. And this Patreon account, among the benefits, are pre-recorded fitness videos that are on demand. So after I just talked to you about the wonders and joys of squats and you're like, cool story, bro. I don't know how to do it. Don't worry, because I've already recorded a video telling you exactly how to perform a squat correctly. And you do that with me. So patreon.com slash Roz the Diva. And it's still just Roz the Diva. Boom. Google me, find me, stalk me. I love it. Thank you so much. I'm so glad we finally did this. We wanted to do this in person at the Google office before everything closed. And we got you here. Thank you for <laughs> everyone who joined. Please go visit rosthediva.com. Take some of her classes. I may see you on the Fridays. Thank you so much, yeah. Ron. Hey, have a good Thank rest. you so much for having me, Adrian. And um, you know, the the last thing I just want to say why this particular experience was important to me is because one of the reasons why I started doing fitness full time is because I kept getting fired from other regular jobs uh, for running around pole dancing on the internet. And one thing that a previous manager told me was to please consider your cyber reputation. You know, because I was doing supposedly all the wrong things if I wanted to advance my career. And the fact that um, I have considered my cyber reputation, I took a big chance doing something very out of the ordinary. And now Google is considering my cyber reputation and they consider it positively is um, it's absolutely mind blowing. So I owe you so much. Thank you so much for all of your support. Thank you, Graz.